Hey everyone, we're back. Um, yesterday, found out to have an interesting experience. You watched me unbox on camera a factory sealed Intel box, or what appeared to be one. It actually had an AMD processor in it, literally, no joke. It was an AMD FX, some, probably a bulldozer from 2011 on, so it's probably a bulldozer. Um, had been shoved inside the plastic clamshell for the chip, Intel chip, had bent pins on it and everything, so sent that back to uh, Amazon on the same uh, yesterday and uh, figure out uh, what's going to happen with that. So right now what we're doing is, I'm actually going to go ahead and leak test this thing. As you can see, I actually managed to get stuff every freaking thing in here. And it was just insane. Um, so I, I grabbed a 140 fan from upstairs because my other fans aren't here yet, but they will be. Uh, we got that one up here. I flipped the 280 around, so we got the fill ports over here. Switch how these are going to work now, so we got a right angle coming out of here, so this would work without having a massive bend on it. Um, we got the one back there. Um, some light here. It's a, it's a tight fit, but it wasn't too bad of a bend. Um, over here, this one, this one was a really tight bend. The one from the CPU export, the, the uh, output, outlet port, into the... Uh, um, the 140 uh, rad here, that's a very tight fit right there. Um, I had to do a, quite a bit of fitting uh, for that. <laughs> you want to look at how much fitting I did. Look at all this. Is, this is all the stuff I've done from all the fitting today, just all these uh, tubing cuts. I'll just put them all over here so you can kind of see just the insanity I went through. Trying to find all the little bits and pieces here. That's like, I think that's well in here somewhere here, but that's most of them right there. Let's look at all that. That's from all the cuts today that I did on sizing things. So I had to go back through and resize this tube here because um, it was a little too little. It was a little too long or short, so it was getting really bent right there. It still kind of is a little bent right there, but it's better than it was for sure. Um. I uh, switched the uh, I switched where the the this uh, kind of fill thing it is here on the that uh, uh, what do we call that kind of spout thing there. Switched it from over there to there. Moved the um, air bleeder over to that back port. Um, put in I just put the CPU in over the socket. Um, yeah, it should be fine that way for you know for a fitting test. Make sure everything fits in, and also the leak tester. Um, to install that, what you do is, is you take, there's, there's four standoffs, or there's actually eight of them. They look like this, they look like these, they come with the, uh, kit. Um, uh, but the ones you want to use actually have smaller, kind of, uh, a smaller rim around, or ridge around them, the end of them, than this. So these are for the, uh, AMD sockets, but the smaller ones are for Intel, the 11, uh, uh 2011. Let's put those in. Then you get these, um, thumb screws here. And um, there's also some uh, springs that go on the inside of them, and then you put them on there and screw them down. For the AMD sockets, you also have plastic washers you need to use, um, as well as the backplate, I believe. So what we're going to do now is I'm just going to, uh, what I'm doing right now is I'm putting in uh, sheets of paper towels around so I can protect things in case of a leak. Uh, I've disconnected everything from, that was connected up. Um, my uh, PCIe cables, uh, the uh, move the the 24 pin to the back, and we'll talk about that in a bit. So we have to do something with that. That's going to involve this paper clip. Uh, so we'll talk about that. And um, I'm in the process of doing other stuff. So I'll let you sit here and watch while I put things around. I took all this tubing out of here. Uh, it's lost one of the chests here. Um, just gonna throw this on this box. Just right here in handy. Okay, and what, what this is for is to tell one to keep you know any leaks, uh, any you know any small leaks from wreaking havoc all over the place, and also to protect your equipment uh, if leaks do happen. Also, though, this is this will tell you where leaks are happening at because you'll be able to see what's wet and what's not wet. And so with that, from that you'll be able to say, okay, well this is leaking then because this wouldn't be wet if this wasn't leaking. I also want to make sure I get all the bases here, particularly you know, around this pump in case it leaks. 
um, anywhere along the fittings. Um, this in here. I also want to do one on top of the of the uh, PSU in case of um, the leak on that side uh, from this right here. Um, so now we want to do this will come down on here if it does leak, so that's fine. Next, we want to put one on top of this one in case anything over here leaks. I mean, it won't, it won't really matter if there's a little bit of water that gets on your stuff because it won't be turned on. But you'll have to, you know, let it dry out before you could use it. And since we're not going to be actually building the system anytime soon to actually, you know, to full, full completion, uh, it doesn't really matter if a little bit of water gets on it because that's the way at least. Because uh, the processor doesn't get back in stock on Amazon's on Amazon until the 30th, so that's like the end of this week. And um, so it'll be from then till uh, probably they'll probably do a two-day shipping, same as the original thing. I'm expecting a call it pretty soon from the uh, people. The, so we'll see what happens now. Um, for this, what you want? This is what we're gonna use. We're gonna use this to jumper our uh, PSC here, so we can run it without actually having to plug in the motherboard. And how we do this is, I'll bring you over to the other side. Is we have to put put in some specific uh, plugs, and what you need to do is is in plug four on your plug four pin. Right I'm not sure if this is going to show up or not. So you have it this way. Count four over. So one, two, three, four. So this one right here, this is your green wire. So that's you know the PSU on essentially. This is and the way you can tell how it's oriented is this one here. This is the negative five volt rail. Or a negative 5 volt cable, which was um, deprecated in 2002 from the ATX standard, so it's never used, and that's how you can tell which side you're on. And that's number eight. So now you can use three, five, six, or seven for the ground, and we're just going to go on five because it's right next to here. So we're just going to go. You know, you may not want to do this. You may want to get like an actual thing that you can use to jumper it. Actually, make um, a uh, like a plug you can use to do this. All right, and you shouldn't, you know, you shouldn't be worried about like an electrical shock or anything from that. If you need to check, that's what it should look like. Um, but if you are worried about it, you can leave a little bit of plastic on there. Uh, so what we're going to do now is I'm going to grab this uh, over here, unplug it and hook it up over on the other plugs on the other side where it's closer. Now a very important thing is that you don't want to run your pump dry, so make sure this is on the off switch when you plug it in. Otherwise, it'll run the pump and you'll frack it up. Because they have a wet seal, and if you run them dry, you essentially destroy that seal. And, uh, yeah, you're at the cost of the pump, which is, you know, pretty expensive. So before I even plug this in, just to make sure, we're going to go ahead and actually start filling this a bit. I'll be able to test for the hell is that. Oh, that, okay. I'll also be able to test for uh, some of the, yeah, if it leaks a little bit from here. So let's see, I'll go ahead and put you here. I can see this gets you in a good place to see the reservoir. I'm going to get my funnel, which we're just going to plug into here now. We're not going to use the, the red angle. I'm just going to stick it right on there. In fact, that right angle that was in there has been used somewhere else now. Tighten that down. So I got my distilled water over here. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to pour this into a couple of cups, into a measuring glass cup, whatever. So I'm not having to hold that huge gallon over. I use a flat 
plastic ones. I do have a glass one. I was hoping maybe one of these was in milliliters. Uh huh, here we go, milliliters. Perfect. This is a 500 milliliter measuring cup. So 500 milliliters is essentially two cups, 16 ounces. So I'm just going to fill this up a little bit. Let's fill it up maybe yay high. I'll start uh, pouring this in here. So far, I'm not seeing any leaks. Like I said, it's not under pressure, so at the moment. Okay. Oh. You gotta plug it in first, that would help. I should get all the water out of here. Got a little bit of a problem there because we got this going over so it's like flat here. Okay, that's about all the water out of there. <laughs> I'll have to plug it in first. Okay. Okay, you see it going. That was a little, that's kind of close there. Just a little bit. That's radiators making some belching noises. That's good though. This is good. It's working. The, the power supply is working. So that thermal tape tester is full of crap. <laughs> see all this air just belching out. I don't see any leaks yet, which is also good. This could be... Oh, wait. We do have a little bit of a leak down here, don't we? Yes, we do. Alright, so unplug it. We have a sprung a leak. Oh, let's see, it's just fitting here. Okay, well, at least it's on a place where we can deal with it. Let's go and grab some more paper towels here. Throw it under here. Wad it under here. That seems to be the only leak so far, though. Alright, let's get my... It's also good to have it actually leaking while you're doing this, because now we can figure out when it's tightened. Properly or not. I'm not sure if I'm tightening it or loosening it. Yeah. It did stop leaking. So if you want to see where the leak happened, it was right here. Oh, you can't really see it too much there. Right here. It was on this this piece right here. It wasn't completely tightened down yet. Or wasn't completely tightened down enough. So that's why you have this stuff for, for situations like that. Put you back on the reservoir there. Alright, let's see how much what this is there down there. I've got most of it with all that. That was, that was a fair whack of water, too. It wasn't just nothing. I mean, it was a fair whack. It was leaking pretty good there for a bit. I don't see anything else at the moment. I'm going to make sure I get all that up before I take another shot at this here. Don't want any of that in there causing problems. Um. Did I get in below? I mean, I'd have to assume so. No, I guess not. Okay, good. Just right there. 
wasn't a torrent of water, just a little small one. And this is why you want to do a leak test, because if you just started this up, you didn't do a leak test. Oh, what the fuck? This thing is so annoying. Come on, there. Damn. Yeah, you, know, you just start it up like, oh, it's not going to leak. And that happened, you know, you'd be screwed because you get something somewhere. You'd get wet. Um, okay. So let's go ahead and um, re do this bottom section here. Because again, there's no, no, there's no reason why it wouldn't leak again. There's nothing that would keep it from doing so again. So put some more down there. Oh, come on. Just, I want you to stay in here like I have you. It'd be good. Yeah, there we go. Um, all right, let's go ahead and uh, fill up a bit more. And let's have a look and see if there's any other wetness anywhere. Not feeling anything. Everything looks like it's properly seated. Looking down here. And down here. Yeah, so let's go and do some more. This will also give me an accurate gauge of how much I'm going to need for when I actually put in the mayhems. How many bottles I'll need. Okay. I have the pump set it set at one right now on the the speed thing. Let's stop right there. It's getting a little full. Let's see what this does. Let's go ahead and plug it in. Okay, and third on. Not quite enough to get through everything. Wow, that's about three. Let's check. Let's check for leaks again now. Um, yeah, this one's good now. No leaks here. We're getting some around to the top here, so we'll be able to see if we got any leaks around here. Nothing. I think that was going to be the only. Well, I'm not going to say it because then I'll jinx myself. But for right now, for right now, it looks fairly good. I don't see any leaks around the socket anywhere. So we got that back on flush and got the uh, situation figured out there. That was one of the key part places I was worried about. So remember, I kind of fracked that up. But it looks like it's fine. I don't see anything coming off there. This is about the shortest possible, the shortest number of runs, size of runs I could do. So let's not do too much more. Let's just do a little. We'll go a little bit at a time now. So I just want to barely fill it up to where it's going to be circulating. Plus we have to see how the um, this all holds up with the water in there because that adds some weight. Okay. Oh, there we go. We have equilibrium. Let's put a little more in. Because the air passes through, it's going to really start sucking that down. A bit. Now you can see all the air kind of coming out here. Let's give it a rock or two. 
start to really see the air fly out of there. Now you hear that this radiator over here, this one forty, belching like you wouldn't believe. So our, we got a little bit of a leak again here. Our, um, <laughs> our, I don't know if you can see it or not, but our, um, our uh, thing here has started filling up with water for some reason. Our, uh, you know, flushing system. So it's not entirely, and the, the right here is leaking a bit too, that's interesting. So under pressure, this does, will not hold the water properly. So what we'll have to do now is we'll have to actually flush the system. So what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to put it right back into here because no reason not to. So what I'm just going to do is I'm just going to blow the first one, plug it. I'm just going to blow on the end, the filling end here, and um, we'll see if we can't blow the uh, water out. I'm going to go ahead and open up the we'll let uh, gravity do a little work here. That's working pretty well. It's kind of back flowing out. You can see the pump straining here. Well, we'll take the final off then, because this thing's on so tight I can't get the bloody fitting off. Now we got to have that on for, uh, you know, resistance for the uh, opposite side there. That was about one inch away from smashing into my iPhone screen. There we go. Okay. So I'm going to horse it down on this end. I'm going to try and Okay, there we go. Got it. Jeez. Thing was freaking tight. That's good though. That means no leaks from there. Last thing I can remember, we actually got the uh, bleeder port here. True. I need to take that out and put in a plug.
We've got a few sitting around here. I have to the plug for that one. Surrounding one of these boxes, I got all the parts in. Yeah, here it is. I will use this plug for the end of this uh, Y splitter. Be careful. Just don't want to overrun the fan too much, the motor too much. Trying to do like a vacuum thing. Didn't work too well. This is going to be insane. Um, there's still quite a bit of water in here. We're never going to get that way out of the uh, out of the suppressor. So what I'm going to do is we're going to clamp the I'm going to bring this around over here. I'm just going to unhook some stuff. Let it drain out that way. I believe gravity should have brought all, anything that's in these water blocks back down to where they need to be. So we shouldn't have an issue with the leak from there. That was nice. Putting so much air through it instead of taking the plug out of here. That was stupid of me. Now we need to do the plug again. It's going the other way. Oh. 
No, the plug, not this. What do I do with the plug? You probably saw me pick that up, but then they're like, no, you idiot, the plug, not the air bleeder. <laughs> this is why we do things like this to, why you need to do things like this to test and make sure everything's fine. I think that's enough water that we can uh, deal with it now. There's a massive leak up. Well, not really a leak up. It's more like it was spread up here. From the <laughs> bloody MOSFET blocks. I forgot I'd unhooked it. Or realized. I hadn't realized I'd unhooked it. And then, um, you know. I think I had that up there, though. That's, that's what we put it there for. For situations that we don't remember about. Pretty sure there's no water on the board itself. Looks dry as a bone. It's a little water down here from this up here, but that's again from the MOSFET block just blowing water all over the place. Okay. So now I'm going to unhook this. I'm just going to put that plug in there. Um, pliers, 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 where are pliers? Where are pliers? There they are. Okay, so this is milled. So we want to do it from the, from here. Just unhook the entire thing from the Y fitting. Actually, probably do it better this way. Basically, I just want to undo the tightening we did on this earlier. I'm surprised this ball fitting, this freaking thing didn't. That's weird. It doesn't, it's not properly watertight for some reason. I don't understand how that is. Oh, I know why. I didn't have it fully locked. I bet you anything, that's why. Let's hook it back in and see what happens. If I can. I need to do this the reverse way now. No, I don't think I had that fully locked in place. So I just tightened it. I just moved the thing back like a whole bunch. It was like sticking, I don't know if you can see it over here. The end was like sticking up here like this. It needs to be perpendicular entirely to it, I guess, to be totally shut off. So there's just enough space there once the pressure got high enough that it just blasted out. Now. I'm going to let it sit out here this time. I'm going to leave the... Well, I need some more uh, fluid. Right, let's go ahead and also reattach this fitting. Compression fitting on top of here. So it's a good seal. Put the bleeder port back in. Did I get any water on the motherboard? I think I might have got a tiny bit.
No, I guess not. It's just on the, uh, the, uh, thumb screws for the block. Get the plug off of here. Put the, we'll sleep it off. Let's just do it that way. See the way it'll work. Um, need the. Actually, we need to put the compression fitting back on. I'm not gonna tighten it down all the way like I had it before. All right, let's go and take this end out. Fill it up. That measuring cup here. So what I'm gonna do is every time I fill it up and turn it on, I'm gonna stick this end of this hose over in this. Because there's some starting to come out of this hose. That's why I stopped earlier. It's like, oh, what's going on here? All right, let's go and fill it back up. Let me go get some more paper towels because I ran out of them. I'm dealing with that spill. All the spill and the leaks and everything else. And there goes the. Still got things on the floor. That hasn't changed. Who knows, there might have a couple more spills to deal with and everything else. Yeah, I'm glad that the Dr. Power thing is full of crap. I thought it was, but I wasn't sure. Although I guess to run a pump, it's not the same thing as running a computer at the same time. I don't think that Dr. Power is made to test high-end power supplies like this one. So I think that's probably running somewhat over spec in some cases. So I should get two. We'll go two play on this one, just in case. Some water. Picked up a little bit of water from somewhere. I'm not sure where, though. Okay. Turn this, let's plug it in and turn it on. Make sure there's no water in the plug. Okay. Alright, everything's looking good. A little bit of water from what's over from before. Um, that's what's over from before, too. Let's um, redo that one. Let me make sure we don't have any water or anything that's testing here. Water testing devices here. Yeah, I went there. I'll stick this one on the outside in case this one starts leaking again. I don't think it will though, we got it fully locked off now. But you never know, let's go and pull that under the whoop. Flashlight, come back, you bastard. And see you can leave. How many times before I drop you and break you? I actually dropped it and turned it off at the same time. That was awesome. Yeah, I actually have a 90 degree angle, a 90 degree uh, thing here left for whatever, I don't know. Put it somewhere, maybe try and get a better. I wouldn't wouldn't be able to do it here because 
on this here because it's too small, too short of a thing. Maybe uh, down here, maybe, I don't know. All right, let's see. So once you get up to equilibrium, in other words, equilibrium is where you are pumping enough water through that the reservoir is refilling with what's in the, the system. And you don't need to do any more, put any more in. Then you should leave it running for a little while because things like what happened earlier will happen and you'll be able to see what's going on. We'll see the whole thing. Okay. So that this on just in case. And we got some water coming out. Full stream, perfect. Okay. As you can see, you can't even hear the. You can hear the fan start up initially, but you can't hear it now. So I'm looking, seeing a lot of air coming out. A lot of air coming out. You see all that air? Holy hell! Got a little bit of a leak over here. I don't know when that was there from before. It's important to remember where thing where leaks happened at, so it's filling around each fitting here individually. I think it feels solid. So just rocking it back and forth. You see all that, that stream of bubbles you get? That's literally a stream of air that you've unlocked, unleashed from your system. In other words, your system is farting. That's what all that air is from. So, every time we go on this way, it's all coming out of the 240 up there. 280, excuse me. Um, so I'm going to let this run for a little bit, and we'll be back. All right, so we're back. Um, what we're going to do now is, is we're going to continue running this and change checking for leaks. And then we're going to have a little, sit and run for a while and we'll just talk about stuff. Let's see how far that drains down. Lots of air coming out. Um, I'm going to go and try and turn up the now that I can get to it, let's turn it up properly. The uh, pump speed. It's just right in a really bad spot. It's like right here in the back. And it has to go this way, and I can't really get to it very well, very easily. <clears throat> so I'll have to figure out some way of uh, dealing with that. Lots of air coming out. You just gotta continue doing this for a while, and there's tons of air. There's gonna be tons of air inside of this 280. It's just the amount of air is gonna be massive.
I don't see any of the leaks <clears throat> yet. But down here around this, there was a little bit of uh, I think that was still there from last time though. It feels pretty dry now. So there's a little bit of wetness there. I also think I'm feeling the coolness from this uh, Y fitting. This Y uh, splitter because it's copper and so it's got a lot of cool to it. Um, same with these right fittings. Right angle fittings. <sighs> You guys can't see how much space the air takes up. When we started this, the uh, water level was right up to that uh, silver thing right there. And now it's a little bit below it. So it takes up a lot of, air, of space in the loop as well, in the radiators. And so all that air is <clears throat> blocking your water, or coolant or whatever you're using, from uh, being uh, you know, having the heat dissipated from it by the radiators. That's just something you have to deal with. And it's probably a lot more of an impact on this system because I have these huge radiators. If they were normal sized radiators, they probably wouldn't have this much air in them. Of course, I was also blowing air into them earlier, so there's air all over the place probably. I'm also going to rock it back this way a bit. There's a lot of air in the back one, too. This is going to run up into the 240, Of course, what else if I could get in there and uh, turn the pump speed up a bit? I have to put the plug in there or do that then. That really wouldn't help because it wouldn't would just be, you know, overloading this, the pressure on the system. Uh, because this hole up here, if we had the bleeder port in there, I wouldn't be able to do it sideways to do that. Maybe I just need to go a little bit of a distance to get to that. Let's see. Let's see if I can see what's setting it down right now. Looks like it's still on one. Over here, 
spel wel over dan. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn this off for a second. I'm also gonna put the plug in. The bleeder port. I'm gonna see if I have another plug, so I might have to get another one. No, see if I'm clamping that down, but let's try not to tip it over too far. to get the plug. Oh, it helps a little bit. Put in a little bit of pressure. I'm not sure if So I got it on five now. I'm pretty sure it's on five. It's coming up crazy. Actually, getting little bubbles coming down and being pulled into the. pull into the pump there but
This is also a good test for um, pressure. See if the system can handle the pressure on high. Not seeing any leaks. <clears throat> no drips. This is handling down here. There's no leaking from here either. I think the system is going to be doing pretty good now. So surprised I actually managed to get this uh, the, the radiators on the inside. This had like a brainwave last night. Well, actually it was brainwave when I woke up in the middle of the night last night. I thinking, well, what if I did this? Man, there's a lot of air coming out of this thing still. I know you can see some of it, but not all of it, maybe. Especially not everything that's coming out of the 280 rad. The water level's gone down. That's just from all the air getting knocked out of the system. A lot of air coming out of the Cycling it off and on quickly a couple times, that also helps get air out as well. The system isn't actually completely filled yet. Which is why there's still a bunch of air coming through. Look at all that, Look at all that air. That's insane. We need to put some more water in. Much more. Maybe a little bit. <clears throat> 